All right, so this video is going to be going over the snare proteins. Uh, in the, the general uh, ANP textbook, uh, they mention snare proteins, and there's practically one or two sentences to it, and there's nothing else. So I thought I'd make this video uh, to help you guys get a better understanding of what's going on over here uh, at this, uh, this junction over here. So essentially what this snare protein is or what the snare stands for, the snare stands for soluble NSF attachment receptors and the NSF stands for N ethylmalamide sensitive factors. So what we have here is this. Remember the big picture is we have these vesicles. These vesicles all are filled with neurotransmitters and these neurotransmitters need to be released over here into the synaptic cleft. So how does that happen? Well it happens through uh, the, it, it happens because of these snare proteins and these are these we have four proteins that are that we're going to be looking at, which are responsible for this docking to take place. So these proteins, uh, four proteins, are uh, synaptotagamin and synaptobrevin, which are uh, embedded in this vesicle here. So they're referred to as these V snares. Then we have SNAP25 and syntaxin, which are part of this uh, presynaptic uh, membrane over here. And the T stands for target, the target snares. So uh, again, so if you look over here, this is a synaptotagamin, this is a synaptobrevin, and the for the T snares we have the syntaxin over here in purple and we have SNAP25 over here. SNAP25 stands for soluble NSF attachment protein 25. So uh, if you notice that these are uh, the, the syntaxin, the SNAP25, and the synaptobrevin, these are all alpha helixes. So what happens over here is this. Now, if you look over here at syn synaptotagamin, you'll notice that there's two circles over here. The first circle, the one on top, this side is called the C2B region, and the one on the bottom over here, this is the C2A region. The C2A region is going to bind to calcium, and the C2B region is going to want to bind or interact with this uh, syntaxin over here. So, this is what's going to be happening. Now, as the action potential is coming down, notice that I put down these voltage-gated sodium channels. Um, it's not the book, the publisher didn't put this over here. Again, this is uh, a lack of detail that they didn't cover, and I'm adding over here. So we have these voltage-gated channels. So as the action potential is coming down, it's going to open up these voltage-gated channels. Sodium comes in, and then it's going to depolarize, and it's that depolarization that opens up these calcium channels. So as the calcium enters, it's going to come in, and it's going to bind to the synaptotagamin. And remember, where is it going to bind to? It's going to bind to the CTA site of the, the C2A site of the synaptotagamin. Now, when that happens, this, the the calcium, it and, and the uh, the C2A site over here of the uh, synaptotagamin, it has an affinity for the phospholipids over here. So it's going to want to get pulled down. It's going to draw this entire vesicle down closer. As that's happening, the C2B site it's going to bind. It's going to interact with the syntaxin. Okay, so these two things are going to start to lock up. At the same time, the SNAP25 and the synaptobrevin will end up binding with one another. And this is how this entire, uh, we end up getting this, what we call this core complex that forms. And this is how this vesicle ends up getting docked to the presynaptic membrane. So I hope this helps and hope this uh, clarifies some of the things that, uh, some of the questions that you may have had. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions for me, please leave it in the comments below or email me directly. Thank you so much for watching and best of luck on your exams.